Hey folks, so I want to take a look at what makes an anti-kickback chain become an anti-kickback chain. What I've shown here on this quadrant of the guide bar, this is the danger zone. When your cutters are in this quadrant, like this cutter right here, and it engages wood in this quadrant, that's when because of the high velocity of these cutters going around this tip, that's when kickback can occur. It'll, it'll, it'll cause the bar to bang against this wood grain in this direction. The reaction is that the velocity of the chain will throw the bar back in that direction rapidly. That's kickback. Now, this is an anti-kickback chain on my Echo CS2511T, my top handle saw. And I just wanted you to look at something here. Um, first of all, you have to understand, uh, and maybe there's some out there who don't understand what these components are, but this component right here is the cutter. And we have the top plate, we have the side plate, we have the gullet down in here, and then we have in front of it, the leading edge of this particular uh, cutting link is the depth gauge or the raker as it's commonly referred to. So normally when this chain is moving around the tip and it gets into this danger zone right here, this depth gauge actually sort of relatively lowers itself with respect to the height of the uh, working corner on the cutter. And that's what allows this chain to just dig into the wood grain and then that reactive velocity, bang, it, it, it pulls the, the guide bar back up. So the way to control that would be if you could raise the depth gauge as this is going around the corner, you could keep this tooth from digging in too deep or this cutter. Well, look at this, folks. This link right here is sort of a an oddball, isn't it? Um, but the way it's designed, it goes before the, the cutter and the depth gauge. And watch what happens when you're in a normal cutting position, cutting flat into the wood grain. Let's see if I can show this. You can see that uh, this edge right here is lower than the depth gauge. So it's out of the way. It's allowing the depth gauge to do its job in the normal cutting position. Watch what happens though when we round the corner. When we get into this area right here, look what happens to this edge right here. It starts to poke its head up. When it does that, it's actually pushing the guide bar in this direction away from the wood so that this cutter can't engage the wood like it normally would. And, it, and so one of the side effects of this, one of the downsides is, even though it, it reduces kickback, um, it makes it very hard to do any kind of bore cutting um, using the tip of the blade. Um, because all around this tip, you're being prevented from getting a good bite in the wood grain because of these anti-kickback features here. So. Listen, I just wanted to start a discussion on this topic. I'd like to see what kind of information you guys have on this in the comments. Um, I have a couple other chains. I have one that Andre sent me. Um, it's a steel, um, I think it was the R, was it the RS, Andre, or the RM? Um, I believe it was the RS, which is the uh, full chisel chain. Now, I'll show the difference between this chain that we're looking at here and the non-anti-kickback chain in another video. I'll do that tomorrow. But for right now, let's just start a discussion on anti-kickback. All right, so there you go, friends. Today is T minus seven days and counting. And um, I, I'm curious, I really am curious to know what you all have to say, you experts in chainsaws out there about this topic of anti-kickback. Um, and like I said, tomorrow on T minus six, I'll actually, uh, present some other chains to uh, to the viewers and we'll talk about those chains uh, but for now that's it folks that's all I'm going to give you tonight um, I appreciate you guys tuning in 
I love the comments. Comments are great. Uh, you guys are wonderful people. So stay kind out there. Spread the love around. I'll see you on T-6. Over and out.